So thankful to be with you once again on the program, Watch Therefore. And, and though these are tumultuous times, times that are shaking and putting fear in people's hearts, for disciples of Jesus the Lord who walk with Him, who abide in Him, who know His ways, we understand what He's doing all around us. And we understand this is a time where there's great comfort available to us and also great hope. We can be and should be very hopeful in these times. So today what I'm going to be talking about is the Jewish wedding, the days of Noah, and the rapture. The Jewish wedding, the days of Noah, and the rapture. Let's start off with a word of prayer. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, please bless the teaching and hearing of your word tremendously. Please bring great comfort and hope Oh, Lord Jesus, to the precious ones who are watching today, we ask it, Holy Father, in our Savior Jesus' name, amen and amen. And, and, and truly, there is great darkness encroaching upon us from every side, yes? And the reality is, like I say oftentimes, the truth doesn't always make me happy, but I sure am happy to know the truth. Will you face the truth of this time and then embrace the comfort and hope the Lord has for you? Now, to understand some of the things I'll be teaching about in a moment in Matthew 24, it's essential to understand that the Lord was saying very specific things at the end of Matthew 23 that lead into Matthew 24. Three things we see, pronouncing judgment on Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem, and that though Jews have been cast to the nations of the world, he will gather the Jewish people back to the promised land, and they will be there in Israel at his return, crying out, Baruch Abba B'Shem Yehovah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So I'm going to read that first and then continue. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. See, your house has left you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then in Matthew 24, he tells his Jewish disciples from the Galilee that there are four sets of signs, four primary sets of signs that demonstrate that generation that sees those signs will also see the return of our Savior Jesus to Jerusalem. Yes, there are the birth pangs, four birth pangs the, that are all around us today, of course, and we're experiencing them as, as they intensify and uh, they get closer together, like birth pangs. The seven-year tribulation that this generation is at the doorstep of right now, and Israel in Bible prophecy. Certainly, these signs are leaping off the pages all around us. Everything is changing and shaking, and it will continue to intensify. And if you're saved, you need not worry or fear unless you reject what the Lord is doing all around us and, and choose to, like many even born-again people do today, choose to walk in their own ways and ignore, intentionally refuse to accept what the Lord is doing all around us. If you do that, you'll have unnecessary trouble and sorrow. Well, in the fourth sign that we're going to be talking about today, the Lord also speaks of a mystery that will be unpacked later by the Apostle Paul, which we'll also see in a moment. Let's look at this fourth sign now the days of Noah, Matthew 24, 36 through 41. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Let's stop here and let's look at verse 36. This is an ancient Hebraism, and it speaks of the ancient Galilean Jewish wedding. Remember, the Lord is speaking to those who are Galilean. And so, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. I'm going to share some things about the Jewish wedding. The Father, in truth be told, 
the son also, who's the groom, would select a bride for the groom. And in our New Testament, in the uh, book of James, it says, Our Father called us forth by the word of truth. Hallelujah. And then uh, in John chapter 15, our Savior Jesus said, You did not choose me, but I chose you. Right? And, and, And so the groom would go to the young lady's home there with her parents, and he would bring to her a wedding contract. And that wedding contract was called a ketubah. It had great and precious promises from the groom to the bride. Hold up your Bible if you have it there. This is our ketubah given to us by the groom of the bride of Christ, his church. It has great and precious promises in it, even the divine nature of God himself. Well, the groom, the father and the groom would agree to pay the bride price, the bride price for the young lady. And certainly our father sent his only begotten son who agreed to pay the bride price for his bride, his precious blood was paid for the church, for those who are disciples of Jesus Christ. And and so he would pick up a cup of wine from the table. He would drink from it and set it down if his uh, proposed, if she would pick up the cup and drink from it, she was agreeing to be his bride. Our Savior Jesus held up the cup at the Passover Seder before his crucifixion. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It represented the bride price that would be, pray, would be paid by our Savior. Yes? And certainly, as they were uh, sacrificing lambs at Passover time in the temple in Jerusalem, the Lamb of God went up on the cross to pay the bride price for his bride. He died. He was, he, he was buried and on the third day. Hallelujah. He rose from the grave. But there's no wedding at this time. Oh, no, no. The groom would then go back to the father's house to prepare a place for his bride. And that's what our Savior has done. That's what our Savior's done. When would he return for his bride, by the way? Well, the father would inspect the finished work of the place that he was building for the bride at the father's house. And the father would be the one to say, now it is the time. Go get your bride. Nobody but the father knows. Right? And our and our Savior Jesus spoke of this in John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus, for almost 2,000 years, has been preparing a place for all his disciples, the bride of Christ. He has a place waiting for you and for me, if you're born again, if you've received Jesus as your Savior. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And this is why, because he's gone to prepare a place for us, and he's going to come and get us and take us back to that place. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And oh, hallelujah. No more crying there. No more dying there. No more coronavirus there. No more wickedness and corruption there. We're going to see the king. Hallelujah. The apostle Paul, who the Lord would give revelation to, would unpack these things later, said it this way. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, what? Comfort one another with these words. Oh, dear friend, you're loved by the Lord. If you've received him as your Savior and Lord, be comforted. Don't let your heart be troubled with all this insanity around us today. Like the late, great pastor, Dr. Adrian Rogers said, it's getting gloriously dark out there. These things point to the reality of the any time and soon coming groom for his bride. Our Savior Jesus is coming for you and for me. Be comforted by the word of the living God and the truth that we have a king that's coming for us very soon. Oh, hallelujah. Watch, therefore, 
and be ready. I want to take a moment to say thank you to those who prayerfully and financially partner with Watch Therefore Ministries. Without you, we could not do this exciting and effective and timely kingdom work. The Lord certainly has raised you up for such a time as this. And again, thank you. In Matthew 24, our great Savior Jesus speaks of a faithful, wise, and blessed servant who's watching for the Master to come and doing what the Master commanded. My aim for this television ministry and all of our ministries is to make faithful servant disciples of Messiah Jesus who will hear him say to them, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And one of the ways we walk that out is through Romans 1.16, taking the gospel and discipleship to the Jew first and then to the nations. To the Jew first with our ministry, Blessing Israeli Believers, co-founded by our ministry partner, John McTurnan and myself. We're working through our Israeli believing partners who are getting out the gospel, making disciples of Messiah Yeshua, planting believing congregations, helping to save babies from abortion, and also helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua, and much more. And then to the nations through our ministry, Poured Out for the Nations, where we're serving in African countries. I personally have served in 10 African countries and in India through one of our believing partners and also in America and through this Watch Therefore telecast all over the world. And one of the ways you can keep up with what's going on in this ministry is through our monthly Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nation's newsletters. I write about things that will help us to watch therefore and be ready, and also news and updates about what's going on here in Israel through our partners and in the nations. Oh, it's an exciting way also to keep up with what you can be praying for, for our prayer partners and what you're giving into for those who sow financially into this ministry. And I wanna talk about that for a moment. And as I talk about financial giving, first I wanna say, as always, if you haven't yet believed in our great savior, Jesus, Please don't send any money into this ministry. It's simply our desire that you would be our guest watching the program today and that you would receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And for those who would like to lay up their treasures in heaven, who understand principles of giving and sowing into the kingdom of God, if this is a place the Lord's called you to do so, there's three primary platforms through which you can give. Our Watch Therefore television ministry, blessing Israeli believers and poured out for the nations. And you can do so through our website, watchtherefore.tv and also through the post, through snail mail at our PO box by check. And what a great way to lay your treasures up in heaven. Having said all these things, remember today more than ever, watch therefore and be ready. Our King and Savior Jesus is coming for us any moment. Welcome back to this episode of the program Watch Therefore. I've been teaching on the Jewish wedding, the days of Noah and the rapture. And we ended the last segment, I was speaking about the Jewish wedding, the ancient Galilean Jewish wedding in Matthew 24, 36, which we're going to see again in just a second. It speaks of the groom who's gone to prepare a place for his bride returning to get his bride when the father tells him, now son, it's time, go get your bride. We're gonna read these passages again as it introduces the days of Noah. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the son of man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Incidentally, in Luke chapter 17, the Lord says the same thing in terms of as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. Noah and Lot in Sodom in Gomorrah. So let's think about some of the characteristics of Noah and Lot's day. Let's th first think about uh, Genesis 6, the days of Noah. Genesis 6 1 starts off with what? A population explosion. Men begin to multiply upon the earth. Uh, many Bible scholars believe 
that in Noah's day, the population of the earth was around seven to nine billion people. This year, the earth is going to reach the eight billion people population mark for the first time since Noah's day. Oh, wow. We're in the time of a population explosion. Think of this. 200 years ago, there were only 1 billion people on the earth today, this year at least, about 8 billion people. That's a population explosion. Wickedness in Noah's day and also Lot's day. Wickedness. Listen, folks, things are so wicked now that during primetime television, there'll be a commercial and two men will kiss each other or two women will kiss each other in the commercial. And if you say there's something wrong about that, then you're the bigot. Then you're the one who is evil. No, no, no. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. Around the world, there's a global homosexual movement marching under a symbol. What is that symbol? The rainbow flag. What was the sign of the covenant with Noah? The rainbow, as it was in the days of Noah. So it'll be with the coming of the Son of Man. Corruption. Corruption. Folks, Government, courts, election processes, education, arts and entertainment, Fortune 500 companies, sports, and even many churches in whole or most of denominations of churches are promoting this filth. They're corrupt. Uh, a man will, or a woman will call themselves a pastor and hold up this holy book and marry a man to a man and a woman to a woman, the height, the epitome of corruption. Things are so crooked and promoting the days of Noah and Lot wickedness. Every human institution is becoming more corrupt than ever since the days of Noah and Lot. Violence, violence, the violence of Noah's day and Lot's day. And you just turn on your television. If someone wants to dispute these things with me, I say, no, listen, here in Houston, just turn on the local Houston news and watch it for the next five days and then come back and dispute these things with me and have a discussion with me. And I've, had, I've said that to people and their heads have dropped and said, I can't watch it. It's too depressing because of the violence, the violence. And what could be more violent than murdering 43 million babies in their mother's womb every year? And if you go back to like 1980 or so, what is the, listen, if, if, righteous, if righteous Abel's blood cried out for vengeance, one man, what must the blood of a screaming a billion baby, a billion babies sound like in the ears of a holy God? Oh, God have mercy. Now, but but Dove, I thought you said this was going to be a message of comfort and hope and of grace. Yes, here it is. You ready? Noah found grace. In the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And we see that grace for us in these modern days of Noah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, think of this. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, the blessed hope that we have in the rapture, our Savior coming for us. Remember, in these passages we just read in Noah's day, the epitome of God's grace is here we are at the edge of the tribulation, Billions are going to perish under the wrath of the Lamb, Jesus Christ. What's our hope? What's our comfort? The epitome of God's grace. Two will be standing here. One will be taken by the grace of the Lord in the rapture, while the other is left for the wrath of God in the tribulation. Two will be over here. One will be taken by the grace of the Lord in the rapture to that place he's been preparing for us, while the other is left for the wrath of the Lord in the tribulation. Folks, this is the grace of the Lord for us. His grace teaches us in this incredibly, insanely wicked, evil time that tempts us to become part of that which is under God's wrath. The grace of the Lord teaches us, no, I'm going to deny that ungodliness and worldly lust. And, and to say, yes, I want to embrace the things of Jesus, the Lord, 
our Messiah, our Christ, who sin coming. Yes, we embrace him. We abide in him. We walk in him. We walk in the light while the darkness is all around us. And even the light that is operating through us by the filling of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, as we love our Savior Jesus and we love our neighbors ourselves, that light even pushes back and holds back a measure of the darkness. And then when we're lifted up out of here at the rapture, that darkness engulfs the earth. Wow, what grace, what grace, what comfort, what hope we have. Yes, that we're going to that place he's been preparing for us. Oh, hallelujah. Look at 1 John chapter 3. We see here the bride waiting for the groom. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this what? Hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. You see, this is where so much of modern westernized American Christianity has completely missed it completely disregards the rapture and what that means for the bride of Christ. While the groom has been preparing a place for the bride of Christ, the bride of Christ is not to be out being an adulteress with the world. No, like this speaks of it in 1 John chapter 3, the, the bride is to be preparing for the any time coming of the groom. Preparing for what? To live this new and very different than ever before in the bride's life, new life with the groom. You see, that's what we're to be doing. We're not to be loving the things of this world. We're not to be uh, uh, being an adulteress uh, as a church, the bride of Christ against the groom. No, shaking our fist in the groom's face, flaunting that we love the world, not the groom. Right? No, that's wickedness. That's evil. That's the days of Noah's stuff that's under the wrath of God. No, we're to be looking every day for the groom to come and purifying our lives, cooperating with the grace of the Lord. It's not that we can purify ourselves in and of ourselves. That's the grace of the Lord working in and with us. That, that passage in Titus 2 continues, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special, purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. So we cooperate with the grace working through us to purify us by purifying ourselves, living for purity. You know what purity is? That which is without mixture without the mixture of the, the wickedness and the corruption and the violence and the evil of this world. And, and that's why the Lord, he tells the, uh, the good and faithful servant uh, as he speaks of these things. Well, first, let's go back to Matthew 24, uh, 40. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming in an hour you do not expect. Watch therefore and be ready. Watch therefore and be ready. Our Savior goes on to talk about a, a blessed, wise, and faithful servant who's watching for the master to come and giving the others the bread of life, Jesus Christ. What about you? Are you ready for our Savior to come? Are you watching? Are you saved? Will you go with us? Well, how do I get saved? Turn from your sins and repent. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried and on the third day. Hallelujah. He rose from the grave and he's alive and he wants to forgive you and give you eternal life today. Begin now in your heart to repent, turn away from your sins, and call upon his name. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you're doing that, oh Jesus, Lord, save me. I want to follow you. I want to go up in the rapture. I don't want to be here for your wrath on this world. And if you're doing that, there's information at the bottom of your screen. Contact, contact us and we'll send you a brochure called How to Begin Your New Life in Christ. Yeah, it'll give you some instructions and help you. Contact us. We want to pray with you if you're getting saved, giving your life to our Savior, Jesus. And for everyone who's watching, listen, 
There's a blessed and faithful wise servant who will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. And there's a wicked servant who goes to hell. Oh, be the blessed, wise, faithful servant. And more than ever, watch therefore and be ready. The rapture is the next big event on the Lord's prophetic calendar. It will be the greatest thing that could ever take place in the life of a disciple of Messiah Jesus. Despite this clear event in Scripture, there exists much confusion and heated debate around the rapture. These questions and more are answered in my new book, The Gospel Truth About the Rapture. What is it? Is it in the Bible? Why is there so much confusion about this topic? Why do fewer church leaders teach about the rapture today? Why has it become increasingly unpopular? Since there are different views and positions, can we know the truth about the rapture? Why is the rapture important to the Lord's disciples? The events found in the gospel truth about the rapture are leaping off its pages. Like never before, these scriptural truths pertain directly to the disciples of the Lord in this generation. If you would like your life to become dramatically more dynamic and hopeful, read and implement the gospel truth about the rapture. And with a tax-deductible gift of any amount to say thank you, we will send a copy of my new book, The Gospel Truth About the Rapture. Be sure to write Rapture Book in the check memo section or online giving notes. And be sure to watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment.